Hi, I'm Charlotte Frassa, a second year computational neuroscience PhD student. And today I want to talk to you about reading papers fast. So do you also always struggle with reading the literature, adding papers left and right to your to be read list, feeling extremely overwhelmed in the weekends because you assumed you would be reading all these papers in the weekends and end up not reading anything? Well, I got you. Today I want to talk about how I read papers relatively fast and how I can get through all the work that is being published in neuroscience without feeling super overwhelmed. Because I think after two years of doing my PhD, I finally found some methods and some tips and tricks that really help me reading the papers that I have to read. So I will take you through them right now. So I think with reading papers, there are usually three things that we want. So first we want to read a lot of papers such that we can keep Keep up with all the literature. Second, we want to remember <laughs> what we have read because otherwise all this reading doesn't really have any use. And third, we want to put all the papers and everything we remember into the bigger context of our scientific body or our scientific literature world. So first of all, I want to talk about how to read a lot faster such that you can read everything or everything you kind of want to. So I think most people that I know read in this manner. So it's a technique to skim the paper. So I'll put up my second screen and kind of take you through how I would approach a new paper. So the first thing I would do is to look at the title and the abstract and to decide quite fast if it's actually worth reading the paper or if it's worth my time. Because a lot of papers, even though they seem relevant perhaps, are not that relevant. So it's your job to to kind of decide quite quickly if it's worth your time and effort. So I skim the title and abstract and see kind of what results are being presented in the paper. And then once I've decided to read the paper or I think it's worth my time, I immediately look at the figures. So I usually don't read anything else. At first, I usually just go straight to the figures. And in the figures, you can already see what kind of results they have, how they are presented, what kind of conclusions you can draw from it. And it depends a little bit on how much knowledge you have in the field. If you need, for example, to read the introduction or to actually read the text with the results and the methods. But I'm now a little bit more further in my PhD journey. So usually I can just look at the figures and already know 95% of what's written in the paper. So after I've gone through all the figures, I may refer a little bit back to the results and the methods, but usually I go straight straight to the discussion because I think personally that the discussion is the most interesting. In a discussion it's usually what the reviewers thought of the paper for example and they point out some critical points that have to be bettered in the future or some further research questions. So usually by reading this you can kind of think of some questions yourself and that could perhaps be the next paper for you to write. So I think in general this method takes me about 30 minutes to skim through papers really quickly and then if I want to read them in more detail I usually put them aside for later. So then the second step is to remember the papers better that you've just read and the way I do it I use Notion of course so I'll pull up my Notion page so in general in Notion I made this page where I put all the papers I read and you have this web plugin in Notion which you can just link through your papers so if I find the paper I will just click the web plugin and put this directly into my Notion page. Then as I'm reading the paper I usually make screenshots of figures that I like and perhaps want to reproduce in my own work. So these I just screenshot and put in the Notion page. And then I also make little voice memos and this I do with the Notion app. So I put the Notion app on my phone. This is not sponsored by Notion by the way but I just love Notion a lot. So I put the Notion app on my phone and then I just record the voice memos on my phone. And I think by using voice memos instead of typing out what I like about the paper, I usually get a little bit more critical because sometimes when I'm just 
typing as I'm reading the paper. I usually just retype what I just read. Whereas when I use a voice memo, I usually have to think a little bit more about my interpretation of what I read. And I think this works for me a lot better to really understand what's being written in the paper and what I like or dislike about it. Yeah, and then the last step is to put everything into the bigger context. And I think this mostly comes with experience. But when you just start out, I think a good app that I use a lot is Research Rabbit. So Research Rabbit makes these kind of beautiful trees of how all the papers in a certain topic are connected. And I think this is a really good way because you can structure it by year, for example, but you can also structure it by how they cite each other. And this just gives a really nice tree-like overview of all the papers in the field, which then can help you to select your next paper or to kind of understand how your paper is placed within wider, bigger papers. Yeah, and then I have some final tips that I always use when I'm reading a lot of papers. First of all is to use a paper reference manager. Whenever people tell me they don't use a paper reference manager, I'm so surprised because they are super good for, for example, citing work or for collecting all the papers you want to read. So in general, I use Zotero, but I've used Mendeley in the past as well. And I think most of them work very similar so I would just pick a free one that you don't have to pay for. And then the way I do it when I find a paper, I use the web plugin of Zotero and then it automatically imports it in Zotero. And then I put a little tag on it to be read. And I also have the colors for that. So red is for if I really need to read it and orange is for if I might want to read it and then green if I read it. And this for me really works to put all the papers or all the list of papers that I want to read and not get so overwhelmed. Then another tip I have is to set a set reading time. I kind of have this from the Tiny Habit book and I think it's quite important to have a set time in your day at which you will be reading. And I don't think it necessarily has to be papers, but it's kind of good if it is papers. But by having this set time, you every day already read something like five to 10 pages. And then by the end of the week, you already will have read plus 70 pages. And I think this makes managing all the things you have to read so much easier than if you push everything to one day and have to read 70 pages in one day. Yeah, so these are all the techniques and and tricks I've learned over the last two years. If you have any tips for me or some apps that you really like to use, I would love to hear them. So put them down in the comments below. And if you're now writing your literature review, I wish you all the luck and see you next week. Bye.